Széchenyi came from an aristocratic family with a long tradition of serving the Habsburg monarchy. His father, Count Ferenc Széchenyi, was an enlightened aristocrat who founded the Hungarian National Museum and the Hungarian National Library. His mother was Countess Juliana Festetic of Tolna, daughter of Pál Festetic, who won the title of Count from Maria Theresa. He spent his childhood both in Vienna and in the family estate in Neutzeng, Hungary, where he received a rigorous education in literature, languages, history and mathematics. Later on, he traveled extensively in Europe, visiting England, Italy, France, Greece and the Eastern Mediterranean, studying their institutions and establishing important personal connections. The fast modernization of Britain fascinated him and influenced his thinking. He saw that Hungary was lagging behind many European nations in terms of economic development, infrastructure, education and culture. He believed that the root cause of this was the isolation of Hungary from the rest of Europe. Hungary was a predominantly agrarian society that relied on feudal relations and lacked a modern industrial and commercial sector. Széchenyi was convinced that Hungary needed to modernize and catch up with the rest of Europe in order to secure its future and its place in the world. To achieve this goal, Széchenyi embarked on a series of ambitious projects that would transform Hungary in the decades to come. One of his most famous initiatives was the establishment of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences in 1825, towards which he offered to contribute one year's income of his estate. This was a groundbreaking institution that aimed to promote scientific research, education and cultural exchange. Széchenyi was a strong advocate of education and believed that knowledge was key to progress and prosperity. Another major project that Széchenyi undertook was the development of the transportation infrastructure in Hungary. He recognized that the country's lack of roads, bridges and waterways was a major obstacle to economic growth and social mobility. He therefore founded the Hungarian Steam Navigation Company in 1828, which facilitated trade and travel along the Danube and the Tisza rivers. He also initiated the launch of the steamship on Lake Balaton. He was a major supporter of the construction of the chain bridge in Budapest, which became an iconic symbol of modernity and progress, and which still bears his name today. He also undertook the project to regulate the lower Danube from Pest to the Black Sea. For Széchenyi, horse racing was more than just a gentleman's passion. He saw a strong national economic potential in horse racing and horse breeding and introduced them to the nation with one goal in mind the renewal of a proud, strong nation. Another ambitious project that Széchenyi undertook was based on the English model. He established the National Casino in 1827 as a public forum for the Hungarian nobility.
researching his contributions to Hungary were not limited to his public projects. He was a passionate advocate of liberal ideas and democracy. He was also a prolific writer and intellectual who published numerous books and essays on a wide range of topics, from politics to philosophy and agriculture. His first major work, Hittel, credit in English, published in 1830, is considered by historians an economic masterpiece. In addition to his public and intellectual achievements, Széchenyi was also a generous philanthropist who supported many charitable causes. He donated large sums of money to various institutions, including hospitals, schools and orphanages. He believed that it was the duty of the wealthy and privileged to use their resources for the benefit of society as a whole. Despite his many accomplishments, Széchenyi was not without his flaws and contradictions. He was a complex and sometimes enigmatic figure who struggled with depression and inner turmoil. At the age of 68, he committed suicide by a shot to his head. His legacy as a visionary and a patriot is undeniable. One of his greatest political opponents, Lajos Kossuth, praised him this way. Great men of civic virtue, whom I, not out of cowardly flattery, but out of conviction, called the greatest of all Hungarians. <laughs>